Guys, if your uh, assessments here are correct, these are very covert weapons, aren't they? That's correct. Um, there's no entry or exit wound. How they're designed is to make the target feel like they're crazy, like they're imagining things. And you guys also said that these attacks are happening right here in this city, is that correct? I mean, there have been some that have gone public with respect to Washington, D.C. I think it was Mr. U Mr. Grozev said, uh, you spoke to a Russian agent who said that they believe that Americans are using these same weapons on them. Is that correct? That is correct. Might that have something to do um, with part of the CIA's motive to cover up the existence of the, this tech and these weapons? That is a very logical possibility. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Goldman, for his round of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here. Um, Mr. Grozov, I want to follow up a little bit on the interactions you've had with Russian intelligence about um, these a AHIs. And Mr. Zaid, you, I, I want to ask, and this is a hypothetical, but I, I'm trying to understand um, why our government would try to block information sharing or conceal uh, information that they have. And one thing that comes to mind is whether there's an operational risk to revealing any of the, of the details of their investigation. Is, is that something that you have come across uh, in any of your work? There's a lot of reasons why the information might not be publicly released. Uh, and I do think that's something we could address more in a classified environment to explain that. Uh, but there are understandable reasons why the U.S. government uh, has not revealed much of what it knows. There's some long-term things that need to be done in terms of, of new acts. But in the short term, we need to do things like implement the original Havana Act. Yeah. DOD still hasn't done it. They still have not implemented the Havana Act. And we need a VA diagnostic code. Thanks to the VFW brothers and sisters that are here today and for your meeting earlier, we don't have a VA diagnostic code for the 500-some DOD survivors. Yeah. How are they going to get long-term care and disability without that? Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope this issue uh, you see in a, in a room that is often contentious, explosive, volcanic, uh, that you've got members on both sides who uh, first uh, honor and salute the victims and want to do everything we can uh, to make sure uh, that they're made uh, whole and if they can return, can return. And then of course, as the victims have wanted to do, make sure we do everything possible to prevent anyone else from suffering from this. And I yield back. Thank you, Chairman. 